Well, we've done it. The picture that is on your screen, hopefully is on your screen, I don't quite know how all this works, um, is a picture of the record shed. All of Stephen's records, aka VMG Colonel, all of his records are now in here. And it is absolutely bananas. I cannot express how good this collection is. I mean, I'm sure there are bigger collections out there, and I'm sure if you if you want a hyper focus, like there are better operatic collections, better jazz collections. There are definitely better jazz collections. He didn't have much of it. Um, you know, whatever. There are more. There are better collections of a particular thing, but this is the best co representative collection of early British records. I think that there is. Uh, it's it's absolutely amazing. If you go to the link which I've put in the video description, which is oldgramophonerecords.co.uk slash shed, you can see it. You can see the horror of it is the record shed, um, which is at my on my uncle's property. Um, it's on it's on his driveway, and you can't swing a cat in there. Organising it is going to be a laugh a minute. I don't think it will ever happen. I, I, to be honest, I, I don't think we'll ever get to the bottom of what's in here because um, there's so much stuff and there's not enough room to properly organise it right now. But all the records I did not want have gone to the Internet Archive. They've come and picked them up and they're on their way to America to be digitised. Which is just the best thing that could have happened. I know I, I said to a few collectors, oh yeah, you can come around here. Well, unfortunately, they weren't able to do it um, for their own reasons. Um, nothing, you know, nothing bad, but they weren't able to do it well. It's all gone. It's all safe. It's all somewhere that it will be digitised for posterity. Which, at the end of the day, is what Stephen wanted. Uh, that's what it said in his will. My records are to be digitised while well, he's got his wish. And all the rest of the stuff, unless I believe I can trade with it, that's where it's all going. It's all going to be recorded. And I'll tell you what, they have got some absolutely amazing stuff out of this. Complete runs of Mozart Opera Society, um... Wagner sets. Oh, basically all the stuff I already had. Um, a lot of, quite a lot of little records, 8-inch broadcast and things like that. Um, all the things that I already had. So, a bit of everything really. And it will be its own little collection up there on the Internet Archive's Great 78 Project website. And it's just, yeah, I, I'm really happy with that because I could have never digitised that many records and quite frankly I didn't want to you know it's not that it's bad stuff in fact it isn't bad stuff in, and I'll tell you something else as well we found eventually about 150s records well if you if you figure out we've gone through we must have looked through 70,000 records 80,000 maybe I've no idea numbers go out of the window with this kind of quantity of records as you will be able to see from the photographs there are a heck of a lot of records um, but there's hardly been any 50s stuff 40s or 50s stuff a friend of mine Gavin has been extremely helpful and he's been uh, he's had a look through and taken some stuff he wanted out um, He's been the helper and provider of boxes, really, so he's quite welcome to him. Um, but apart from that, it's all in this shed, so if you want to come and have a look, at some point, when the dust has settled, you are quite welcome to come and have a look through the shed. The other big interesting news is, all of Stephen's numbered albums which were these white albums that he made himself. Um, it must have taken him years. But he's done a spreadsheet of them all. We found a little bit of paper saying that there was a spreadsheet on his desktop 
uh, it's a jolly good job we found that because we were able to just like log on to his computer and there it was right there we got it I have it uh, along with several other spreadsheets of stuff that I probably will never be able to find in amongst all this mess but they exist um, so if you would like to look at the contents of the numbered albums you are welcome to things are going very slowly because they're everywhere and everything is everywhere and everything's just it's a lot of work but if you look through and you find stuff that you want to trade f with for then you're quite welcome to mention them if you do want to look at these albums you have to give me your email address uh, mine I will put in the link uh, I'll put it with the link sorry on the video description so feel free just just email me say hey I want to see the contents of these albums I'll tell you what there are a lot of extremely rare record labels in there a lot a lot of rare records um, but quite a lot of tat as well <laughs> you know there are Gracie Fields records in those albums that you know he obviously liked there are all kinds of records in them really along with major rarities just the amount of um, early acoustic records that have fallen into my possession with this collection is absolutely incredible when we were looking at the last lot um, so we were looking at the last shelves in his garage that we'd been unable to get to. We found rows of 12-inch Vocalion records. Columbia stuff I'd just never seen before. Uh, quite a lot of Italian Columbia. A lot of uh, Columbia Grand Prize. Early single-sided ones. A ridiculous amount of Grand Monarchs. Amazing stuff. Stuff that... If I found just one of those records in a charity shop, that would have absolutely made my year. And I can't get my head around what I've inherited, really, because I have all... And this is why Stephen and I got on so well, and I think this is why he willed it all to me, because I have always been interested in the kind of esoteric, pre-1925 popular stuff that no one else gives a toss about, or no one that I know about, especially not in this country. I like Stanley Kirkby a lot, I like a lot of those studio singers, Harry Fay, stuff like that. And so did Stephen, and this is the best collection of it I've ever been able to, uh, I've ever had the opportunity of even looking through, never mind owning. The things that will come out of here are absolutely incredible. My next big project is I have a case of 22 very early 7-inch discs, a couple of Berliners, Xonophones, GNTs, and a Cole, and I'll digitise those. Um, I have... Oh, man. Where do I even start with the operatic stuff? Shelves and shelves and shelves of it. Loads and loads and loads. And to be honest, I set out thinking, right, well, it's Caruso, it's been issued, I won't bother to record it. But then I ended up playing it and I thought, you know what, I just like how this sounds on 78. So you will find that I do upload some quite common records. And if you think to yourself, oh, why are you wasting your time with this? Well, that's just too bad because I really like the sound of them on 78 i just like 78 <laughs> i don't know if you got that idea already i don't know how obvious that is but i really really like records so all that stuff that i didn't want it's all gone to the internet archive and it will have a new life hooray and we're done uh, eventually, Stephen's EMG and his other machines will be auctioned off. I am personally thinking of bidding on the EMG. I've kind of fallen in love with it. Um, 
I feel as though I should, however, be quite fair and tell you all when the auction will be. I don't know yet. Uh, try not to go mad about the EMG, though, because I really do have my eye on it. Now, about the EMG, while I'm here, let me just mention this. There is a fault with the on-off switch. It looks like it'll be quite easy to fix, but it is it is there. Uh, it doesn't have its original sound box on, it never did. It has a Meltrope. And it's one of the late Meltropes as well. So, yes, that is a Meltrope you see in his YouTube videos, and yes, that is the sound box on the machine. Uh, or rather, the sound box on the machine is a Meltrope. It is not an original EMG sound box. So, I don't know if those things will be mentioned by the auctioneer. Uh, I kind of doubt it. <laughs> it will be JS Fine Art where it is all going to be auctioned off. I'll tell you what, his collection of portable gramophones is absolutely amazing. It is huge. He has some lovely stuff. If I had more space, I, I would I would be bidding on quite a lot of the things he has. He has lovely Chinese lacquered HMV grams. Portable gramophones in stunning condition. A lot of cabinet things. Yeah, it, it's... It's an incredible collection, really. Personally, I don't... I understand why you collect gramophones, but he just literally had cabinet grams piled five high. Now, obviously, you can't play the bottom machines, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but surely that's not very good for them mechanically. But says the guy who has seven-foot stacks of records in his cellar, so just ignore me. Uh, I'm talking rubbish. Anyway, <laughs> I'll finish talking rubbish now. Uh, I hope this has been somewhat informative. I very much doubt it has, but do take a look at those pictures. If you don't think this has been hard work, take a look at those pictures, because honestly, it has been... <laughs> I don't even know what to say. It's been amazing, but it has been hard work, and it's been a lot of work, not just for me, but for my family and for the other people involved who have been really, really good about all this. And eventually I will be trading quite a lot of records. Um, I'd rather personally trade four records unless something's very valuable so if you want to have a look at those catalogues get in touch you will need to give me your email address though or you could just email me i'll try and remember to put mine on the link uh, with the link on the uh, video description all right well feel free to get in touch about all this i'm going to record some more records <laughs>